All right, I'm Bryce Bloom. I'm Brent Newbirth. We're both uh, substation technicians for Minnesota Valley Electric. We're here at the St. Lawrence substation. It's 69,000 volts, and we purchased that from a wholesaler. It comes to our transformer, which you can see in the back. And we distribute that voltage at 12,470 volts to the member. Which is actually 7,200 volts on a single phase, which goes to people's homes. And then splits off to 240 volts to their AC panel. All right, here we have the transmission lines, which are coming in at 69,000 volts. They come down, go to our circuit switcher, which is basically a disconnect that's in SF6 gas so that it doesn't arc. And then it goes into the transformer, which takes that voltage from 69,000 volts down to 12,470 volts. And then from 12,470 volts, we hit, we come up into the bus, which is where our metering package is, where our wholesaler can meter how much the substation is using in, in power. And then it goes to our regulators, which our regulators regulate the voltage to our customers through our breakers and out on the line. Um, and then in, from there, it goes into the, the shack through our feeder breakers. All right, so we're in the St. Lawrence switchgear shack right now. And this is basically a dummy bus, they call it. It's a one line diagram. This symbol here represents our transformer. So technically above that is our 69,000 volts. On the low side would be their 12,470 volts. Comes down through our main breaker. This relay here monitors our main breaker. And then that top line is basically the bus that runs through the substation. And each line down with the arrow is the feeder that goes out to a, either a riser on the line and then goes out to our customers. So this is a good example as far as how the power is routed throughout our substation. All right, right here is the backside of the switchgear shack. And each one of these cabinets here is where the feeder breaker is the wire is underground coming to the feeder breaker here and this feeds each member um, goes basically to one of those green boxes that you'll see in a corner of a block somewhere or in somebody's front yard um, comes essentially from this right here the feeder there's cables inside of each one of these and it's the back side of those breakers we have some labeling on the back side of these units um, we got unit one through eight at this substation and the labels on the back of the switch gear are basically for uh, you know, safety aspects so we know kind of which unit we're switching out or switching in or if we're working on that feeder. Um, and it just gives good representation for the, whoever's working on it to know which one they're actually working on it corresponding to what's inside the switch gear. All right, at an uh, open air substation, the power is actually going out overhead, which means it's open air, and that's the power line wires that you see alongside the roads. Um, it just goes out that way, it never has to go underground in that situation. Our switchgear shacks are all in enclosed metal clad switchgear, where our breakers are in actual cubicles that feed out underground to a riser or a PMH or other switching compartments and our string bus subs are all open air and they basically get carried out in the distribution lines right from the sub. The easiest way to stay safe around a substation is to stay out of the substation. There's a six foot fence going all the way around the substation with three rungs of barbed wire around the fence. That's to keep people out, not to keep people in. Um, every piece of bus work wire you see that's exposed is live voltage. If you come into contact with that, you're going to get shot and there's a chance of death. You need to stay at a minimum of 10 feet away from every piece of live plus wire or wire. It is important for us to stay safe in the substation as well when we're working in here. Um, the first thing is our proper PPE. We have hard hats, safety glasses, and rubber gloves if we're working on anything energized or in front of energized parts. When we do specific jobs, as far as if you have a breaker that's not opening, we try to you know, kill that circuit or kill the substation to rack it out. If we have to work on the breaker, we have to use rubber gloves to rack it out. We also have a remote racking device that we can kind of get clearance 10, 15 feet away to rack it out. 
So there's some practices that we go about to try to stay as safe as possible. You know, the main goal for us is to go home every night to our families. Okay. <laughs> so I'll just, I'll just pose the question. Um, why should we stay safe around a substation? All right, the easiest way to say stay, the easiest way to say. Do <laughs> 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 we have bloopers? <laughs> we can, <laughs> we can if you want. <laughs> Wait, there's a truck. Lots of loud trucks today. It's a busy day. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> Eric's being able to cut footage later. All right, whenever you're ready. Sure. <laughs> um, here we are at St. Lawrence Substation, Minnesota Valley Substation. Um, there you go. That's bad. No, the the truck is behind us. You can start by introducing yourselves. Perfect. All right. <laughs> 